Thank you very much, everyone, for attending. Uh, as Oliver said, my name is Robert Strogas. I'm Cubic's Senior Global Director for Mobile Products, as well as Business Line Lead for a, a new venture that we call Cubic Interactive. Um, if you have any questions, I would absolutely welcome them. Uh, I think the webinar doesn't really open itself up too well to, to being interactive in that sense during the various topics and presentation points. But uh, if you add your questions in at the end, we'd be more than happy to get to them, and hopefully we have plenty of time to do so. So quick little update on what we're going to be doing from an agenda. We've done the introductions. We'll talk a little bit about the importance of digital as it relates to advertising and loyalty. And then we'll, we'll talk a little bit also towards the latter half as to what Cubic we're doing as it relates specific to Cubic Interactive. A couple of key takeaways that I'd like to sort of leave everyone with today. Um, Loyalty and advertising solutions, it, this is actually, I think, relatively important. A lot of transit systems throughout the world are witnessing a decline in ridership, appreciating that there are actually exceptions to this. But uh, nonetheless, there are certain technologies, Uber, Lyft, other rideshare services, and that is having an impact on ridership levels that we're seeing in many of the transit systems that we Cubic work with. I'm sure some of you are also potentially seeing such a decline as well. And loyalty can become a mechanism by which we look to turn the tables. Uh, loyalty can be a system upon which we incentivize user behavior and travel on um, public transportation systems. And we, Cubic, view advertising as a mechanism of ultimately paying for those loyalty points. Because a loyalty point, if you've ever stayed at a, a hotel or flown on an airline, you collected those air miles from Air Canada, well, that, that air mile has a cash value. Uh, so in a similar vein of thought, a loyalty point that comes from a transit system would potentially also have a cash value. And that means that somebody's got to pay for that loyalty point. And we think that a great way of incenting that user uh, to ride public transportation and in turn pay for that loyalty point isn't necessarily out of the coffers of the transportation agencies, but have somebody else pay for it, i.e. an advertiser. And we do also believe that loyalty has the opportunity to, to shift user behavior. If you want to put less buses or trains on the system at 8 a.m. to 9 a.m., well, loyalty can potentially become that incentive to shift that peak, shift that behavior. And quite frankly, advertising, it actually can become a revenue generating opportunity. Uh, we're projecting that revenue for some of our trans agencies who are utilizing Cubic Interactive. Revenue from advertising is going to be quite substantial. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are very familiar with advertising in a wrapped bus or physical outdoor media perspective of putting a poster or some other physical media and advertising inside of the transportation system, may that be a bus, train, or otherwise. But digital is quite frankly, that, that is honestly the future. Uh, this is where advertisers want to see their ad dollars go. And it's, it's really quite simple if you think about it. If an advertiser puts an ad inside of a bus or even on a radio or a TV station, that advertiser really doesn't know how many people have watched it, how many people have interacted with it, and ultimately how many people activated upon that advertisement. Uh, conversely, digital, uh, that's trackable behavior. So I, as an advertiser, if I put an ad inside of a mobile app, I can pretty much tell how many people have engaged in that mobile app. And we'll talk a little bit later on in this presentation about the activation bit, the act of actually watching an ad or engaging an ad, and then doing something that that ad advertiser wants you to do, which typically speaking is buy something. But as you can see from this chart, digital, especially mobile, it's increasing. It's becoming the primary mechanism upon which advertisers want to spend their money. And that gold bar on the far right-hand corner for mobile, that's going to be higher than all the other bars in a couple of years. This is, at the end of the day, though, from an advertiser's perspective, this is all about the data. And I can't emphasize this enough. Uh, transit agencies have some really interesting data. Uh, most likely, you support a tap-in type of fare system. If you support a tap-out fare system as well, well, your data is just sort of, you've got data coming out of your ears. But from an advertiser's perspective, that tap-in data is really, really interesting because your transit ridership represents a demographic, a population of the advertising community that 
they really haven't had an opportunity to talk to very much. Yeah, that's why they put ads inside of the buses and the trains. But from a digital perspective, that user is super interesting because what they can do is if they know, or rather you know, where your user is going to be. If you've got a person who takes the same bus every single day at 8 a.m. and then they repeat that journey at 5 p.m., you have now predictive data, you have the ability to analyze where that user is going to be. And in turn, the advertiser can now target that person with a particular piece of content. Let's say there's a Starbucks directly across the street from the bus stop. Well, that's really valuable for Starbucks. Might even be even more valuable for Tim Hortons because they might be able to say, don't go to Starbucks, come to Tim Hortons, come to our place, come buy coffee and donuts from us. We then are able to take that data, that tap-in data, that transit data, and then layer it in on top of other personal demographic information. Being able to understand that this person is a person who is a married with a family of four, general income levels, potential buying history. All of this layers in on top of the transit data to create an incredibly powerful opportunity for these advertisers. And it creates an opportunity for transit agencies specifically to monetize. When you put an ad inside of a bus or a train, that's static information. You can't necessarily go out and change that on a, on a fly based off of who's sitting in front of that advertisement. But that absolutely isn't the case with digital, with mobile, because you can. Who's sitting on that chair, and we know what that person's profile looks like, and they're sitting in there with a mobile device. Split second, you can swap out an ad from Pepsi to Coke because you know that person might have a certain propensity for Pepsi or Coke or vice versa. So really, the data, having the ability to access that data and leverage that data is really important. Now that said, there are certain laws around privacy. GDPR is a really important thing. We Cubic run our Cubic Interactive program with GDPR first and foremost. So we don't take the approach of, well, GDPR-like laws might come into play in certain states and or certain countries. No, we are taking a GDPR-first approach. And with that in mind, we are only utilizing our services for consumers who have actually opted in. So if I, as an end user, have opted in to this Cubic Interactive capability, then and only then is there that tracking going to be occurring. Only then is that information going to be shared because I've effectively said, yes, I give you permission to share my information with Cubic and this Cubic Interactive system. And in turn, if the user decides, you know what, this isn't for me, I'd like to opt out. Again, adhering to the requirements of GDPR, we effectively ghost that person as if they never existed in the system. We erase all traces of that person so that we're again in full compliance with GDPR. So that's something I absolutely do recommend that if this is something that any transit agency or anyone for that matter is interested in pursuing, that you really do approach this from a GDPR first approach, even if those requirements aren't necessarily as stringent in Canada or elsewhere. Now, this digital world also lends itself to potential opportunities. So, we are launching Cubic Interactive first in Miami. We're really excited about our partnership with the Miami-Dade Transportation System. And as part of this, we are also working with Hershey's. So Hershey's is signing up, signed up to become a sponsor in, in Miami. And this relationship, this partnership between us, Hershey's, and Miami-Dade is presenting opportunities to create uh, online, offline, and a fully interactive experience. And this is kind of how I see advertising, especially in the transportation environment, evolving, whereby this isn't just about putting an ad inside of a mobile app on a website or even on a train inside of a piece of paper, but rather how can we drive this awareness around the brand, around what the brand is doing with the transportation agencies, and how can we create a holistic online offline experience? So again, from a strategic partnership perspective, like we're working with Hershey's and Miami-Dade to work with some of the local retailers to create this relationship whereby I as an individual will be able to potentially leverage my loyalty points that I'm earning to redeem for Hershey's candy, Hershey's chocolate, whatever it happens to be, and partner with some of the traditional retailers in the market. 
Uh, and uh, this is, of course, where Hershey's is going to be a participant of the program and whereby they are going to be providing their advertisements into the Miami-Dade transit system. They'll be offering up what we call STARS. So Cubic is developing a coalition loyalty program uh, whereby I'm earning STARS in Miami, but I'd have the opportunity to redeem those STARS for both offline transit redemption opportunities may it be a retailer or even a bar of chocolate um, but also because it is a coalition i could earn stars in miami and then fly to another city that's part of this coalition loyalty program and actually redeem my stars there and vice versa it creates a very holistic coalition program similar to what canada has with uh, with air miles And then this is part of the omnification aspect. So we've, we do recommend that when an advertising program and platform is put in place, this be looked at holistically. This isn't about just digital and, and or just outdoor. Certainly each one has its pros and cons, but more to the point, if you can combine the two and create a synergistic opportunity, because from an advertiser's perspective, they love it when I can an eyeball in front of their brand and that person has just seen in this instance a sprite ad around a bus on a wall at a bus stop and then they open up their mobile app or go to the website and that brand is further reinforced except now in this instance i've opened up the digital experience and i've earned a loyalty point as a transit writer i'm not going to earn a loyalty point by staring at a wall but if i engage with that brand if i if i interact with that brand through a digital experience that's when I can earn that loyalty point. This is all about bringing the user back to this loyalty experience whereby I'm able to earn loyalty points and I'm incented to ride public transportation. Really wanna come back to that as a key topic. We really wanna incentivize that user behavior. So a little bit about Cubic Interactive. Uh, we're, we're really approaching this from a sort of a 360 degree perspective. We, we view this as an ability to take into consideration a user's persona, a user's profile, give that person targeted, contextual, relevant information. We don't want to give a person, let's call it a 16-year-old kid who's riding the subway systems to and from school, an advertisement for diapers. Maybe that isn't necessarily the most appropriate piece of content to put in that person. Conversely, a mother, 30, first time mom, just had her first kid, that's a really great person to give that piece of content to. So this is about understanding who the user is and giving the person contextual or relevant information. Otherwise, you just run the risk of, well, quite frankly, alienating that person and creating a negative user experience. Advertising has, uh, call it a reputation of creating negative user experiences, but it doesn't have to. It can enhance the overall experience so long as, again, is it taking into consideration the contextual aspect and who it is that you're serving that ad content to. And so to sort of step aside from that, we do view the necessity of interacting with all channels, all digital channels as key to this. This isn't just about a mobile app, although that is a critical component, but if a ticket vending machine, if a gate, if a TV screen inside of the transit terminus has the capability of connecting to the outside world, that becomes a medium upon which you can engage with that user. You can reinforce to that user the availability of a loyalty program, the brands that are associated with your transit agencies, with your loyalty program, and in turn monetize those opportunities. But the key is it has to be relevant, it has to be contextual. Uh, you don't want to, for example, follow the path of what I've seen in this industry um, without naming names. There was a scenario where an advertisement was displayed on a ticket vending machine, uh, except that that ad would actually show up before I was able to purchase my ticket. And I wasn't able, as a user, to bypass that ad. I had to wait for that ad to conclude, and then and only then would I be able to purchase my ticket. Well, this particular transit system got themselves into a little bit of fun press publicity in the sense that there was an individual who was trying to buy a ticket. Their train pulled up into the transit, and they're standing at a ticket vending machine waiting for this ad to play. And without any surprise, 
the train pulled off and that person was still stuck at the ticket vending machine watching an ad. Right? That's not a great user experience. So that's where one has to be careful. You have to weigh the pros and cons. So if you're gonna utilize a ticket vending machine, this isn't about inter engaging that user at a key point of that transaction. You would wanna use that ticket vending machine as call it dead space. If that machine isn't being used. If it's just sort of sitting there idly in the middle of a train station, we're on an ad. You might catch the sort of the corner eye of a, of a person walking by, and that's, that's great. Brands will still like that because they're still playing the ad. You don't have to necessarily distract that user at the wrong time. So from what it is that we have developed, though, we do view this as a loyalty program at its core. Cubic Interactive is, at its core, a loyalty platform. So whereby we are issuing out loyalty points, the value of those loyalty points being intended to re be redeemed for transportation tickets, either as a subsidy, if my ticket costs $2 and I've only got enough points to pay for a dollar, well, I've subsidized my ticket. But if I've got enough points to pay for the entirety of my ticket, great, my ticket's now free. This isn't though about transit agencies giving discounts on their tickets. That's not the point of a loyalty program. The point of a loyalty program is about enhancing one, the user experience, creating an affinity to that particular brand, in this instance, the, loyal, the, the transit agency, but then on the last point of encouraging enhanced ridership. If you as a transit rider have an option to go from point A to point B, and you can take an Uber for $15, or you can take public transportation, and yeah, you might cost you $2, but that Uber is super convenient. It's going to get me there about 10 minutes faster. But hang on here. I've got enough loyalty points in my wallet. I can now take my public transportation ride for free. That might just be enough to drive me as a transit rider over the edge to say, you know what, I'd rather take that ride for free, spend an extra 15 minutes on the subway cars as opposed to taking that Uber. Uh, that's really kind of how we're thinking of this. Uh, in addition to, of course, the whole shifting the peak. Uh, we do feel that there are opportunities of incentivizing user behavior. So again, if we know that 100 people consistently take the same train every day at 8 a.m. through their tap data, wouldn't it be great if we could convince maybe 50 of them, 10 of them, 100, whatever that magic number happens to be, to take the 9 a.m. train? And what would that mean from an operational perspective? Would that mean maybe you can run one less train, one less train car, one less bus? Whatever that less number is, uh, it certainly would be appealing to, to many of the transit agencies we work with from an operational perspective if that means that they can run one less thing, whatever that thing happens to be, and at 9 a.m. you shifted that person to an alternative time slot. Now, that isn't necessarily gonna work all the time, but uh, even if you can shift a certain number of people, and I guess the question becomes on a personal level, what is that number for each transit agency? At what point does shifting the peak become valuable for a particular transit agency? So the ways that we certainly recommend, um, and these are the ways that we're operating our Cubic Interactive as a system of issuing loyalty points. At its very core, I'm engaged with a mobile app. I watch an ad. At the conclusion of that ad engagement, I earn loyalty points. Those loyalty points go into my pool, and at some point, I'm able to redeem them. We also support what's called card-linked offers. So if you've ever gone into your bank app or your credit card app, and if you've seen a coupon there, let's say spend $10 at Tim Hortons, earn $5 cash back, well, it's the same sort of technology that we're deploying here. Although instead of it being a statement credit, which is what that example was, we're issuing out loyalty points. So the idea is you go to Starbucks, you spend $10, and instead of spending, getting a $5 cash back to your credit card, we're gonna issue loyalty points. Again, incentivizing that user to ride the public transportation system and creating that online offline interaction point whereby a user is now able to shop at all the best places that they like to shop at, and they're still paying the full price of their cup of coffee, but, and they're still also getting their Starbucks loyalty points, I might add. But in this instance, now they're also earning loyalty points that they can use to ride the public transportation systems. And then this is what we call destination sponsors. So it's safe to say that every transportation system operates in a 
city, town, whatever, where there's stuff going on. You've got sports teams, you've got museums, you've got restaurants, you've got retailers. Those are destinations that people will travel to. So if, for example, if I'm buying a ticket to the to whatever sports team, work with local sports teams so that when I do buy my ticket, issue out loyalty points. Give me enough loyalty points so that I can get to and from the game riding public transportation, creating that affinity, creating that loyalty back to the transportation agency. And then this is the last one is really treating this as a typical loyalty program whereby the transportation agency are the ones issuing out the points. In the previous examples, these are other brands, whether it be the sports team, Coke, Pepsi, Starbucks, whomever, they're the ones who had in the previous examples been ultimately paying for those loyalty points. Now in this scenario, this is where we are treating this as a typical loyalty program whereby you can try to shift the peak. A train is delayed, issue out 100 loyalty points to say you're sorry. Um, something happened, again, issue out loyalty points, or even based it off of how much money the person spends on the ticket. Uh, if you have the ability to calculate distances, point A to point B, you can make it distance-based, but it's a loyalty program that we've developed with Cubic Interactive that as a platform is very extensible to a transportation agency. Uh, one of the other same ways to look at it, at least here in the United States, we have um, what's called transit benefits. So that's where I'm a lay a capable of putting pre-tax dollars into a effectively a prepaid debit card. And every month I'm able to use those dollars to ride public transportation. Our platform, from a loyalty perspective, allows for those pre-tax dollars, instead of it to be given to me on a prepaid debit card, we can auto-deposit those dollars, convert them into loyalty points, and then I, as a user, have direct access, immediate access, to those loyalty points that I can then redeem through my mobile experience or website or other platforms uh, for purposes of writing, again, public transportation. But it creates a very synergistic experience for the end users and for the transit agencies as well. And since it is a loyalty program, uh, we do feel that there are opportunities here to be, shall we call it, health conscious. There are transit agencies that actually do have an incentive to ask their riders to not necessarily get on at that particular stop, at that bus stop, train stop. Maybe there's overcrowding at that particular location and they would like people to walk to the next location. They can incentivize that person with loyalty points. Take the stairs as opposed to the escalator or the elevator, issue out loyalty points. But there are opportunities of leveraging a loyalty program to create a healthy community as well. In addition to, of course, uh, incentivizing and encouraging that behavior of writing the public transportation system. But the key point of this is it's still a loyalty program that sort of circles back towards a transit agency and creating that affinity to that transit agency. So we do very much believe that the key intersection, the key point of engagement for a user of a loyalty program and an advertising solution this day and age is going to be through the mobile app. It's how I do my banking, it's how I order my, quite frankly, my Ubers and everything else in the world is done through my mobile device. But that still doesn't mean that we have to forget about the rest of the transit system. There are ticket vending machines. They have screens. Again, you gotta find the right time and place to display it, but if you can, that represents an opportunity for engagement, for displaying an ad, for monetization. From a gate perspective, what we, Cubic, are gonna be doing is we would display a logo for a split second, 100 milliseconds type of thing. Uh, so I, as a transit rider, would tab my card on a gate, on a reader, and for 100 milliseconds, uh, up would flash a logo of, again, let's call it Starbucks. I'd walk through the gate, and then 60 seconds, 90 seconds later, we would create a connection between that person tapping their transit card or contactless credit card or whatever it happens to be for them to get through. And as long as they've associated that with a user account, we could then associate that with a mobile device. And then when they walk through the gate, we'd actually send them a message saying, hey, Robert, would you like to watch your Starbucks ad 
that you just saw flash up on the gate at so-and-so station and earn yourself a thousand loyalty points. And I, as a user, could then say, yes, I would. I'd love to watch an ad once I'm sitting down out of the way, not blocking the, the, the gates, not slowing anybody down, and in turn, earn my loyalty points. Or, of course, I, I can completely ignore it. Interoperability is kind of just sort of goes hand in hand to the previous slide, but this is key. This is really ultimately creating a holistic user experience because there are going to be people who have a mobile device, people who don't. So this is where you would support capabilities through web, through ticket vending machines, through other mechanisms, TV screens inside of the station. I mean, ultimately, our general thought process is as long as you've got a device, a digital device that can connect to at least from our cubic interactive perspective to us, it's fair game as a platform upon which we can interact with and support. It also becomes an opportunity for a redemption perspective. Uh, and as you'll, you'll note here on this particular slide, we are launching cubic interactive first in Miami to coincide with the Super Bowl that's gonna be occurring down there in uh, February of 2020. So we're pretty excited about that. Uh, that should be a rather nice little kickoff for, uh, for us and for Miami Dade. Now, if you can recall way back in the beginning of this presentation, we were talking about the brand activation, brands caring about knowing that Johnny Smith, who saw that ad from Starbucks, actually activated that Johnny bought a cup of coffee in this instance. So that's what Starbucks care is about. They want to get foot traffic into their re retail locations. Um, as Oliver said, I used to work for CVS, and I can tell you with absolute certainty, CVS's number one priority from a retail perspective was getting human beings into their retail locations. Uh, and getting a human being into the retail location was, it was about 90% of the battle. Once someone's inside of a store, odds are they're going to buy something. You don't walk into a store for the sake of doing it. I mean, granted, there are high value retail items, but the everyday spend category, you're probably going to be picking up something. So driving foot traffic is really, really valuable for retailers. So this is where conversion zones, and this is what, again, also what Cubic Interactive is going to be doing, where we would create, let's say Starbucks is a sponsor, and we would create a geofence around every single Starbucks in the particular city that we're participating in. And as a user crosses that geofence, we'd be able to record that, rec we'd record that. Again, bearing in mind, they as a user have opted in for this, but we'd record that behavior. And then we can go back to Starbucks and we can say, hey, Johnny Smith or so-and-so many number of users walked across your geofence, they walked into your store and they saw your ad. And then the third layer of this is where we couple this with the card linked offers technology. And this is the final piece of that brand activation. So. The idea being that we're now able to track transactions. So we know that Johnny Smith saw an ad from Starbucks. We know that Johnny Smith walked across the geofence and entered into Starbucks. And then the final piece of it is we also, we learned that Johnny Smith actually bought a cup of coffee at Starbucks. This furthering powers or adds value as to why a brand would want to be part of an advertiser to a transportation agency. The brand, the users that, that you possess are of value to these transport to these brands. And it's really, it's a really interesting opportunity to monetize and again drive that user back to the loyalty program. From a user's perspective, again, I want to really emphasize they don't care about ads. They're not going to get excited about watching an ad, but they will get excited about is a loyalty point. They'll, they'll want to collect these loyalty points because it allows them to ultimately get to a point where they can subsidize, again, in part or entirely, their transportation rights. The transportation system is still getting a $2 if their fare is $2, so that's great. You're not losing any money. But the rider, they didn't pay for that out of pocket. No, that, that money's coming from somewhere else. It's coming from a brand. And that brand's happy because, well, they've, they've gotten an eyeball to engage in that ad. They've gotten a person to walk into their retail location. And heck, they might have even gotten a person to buy a cup of coffee. Skip this one. And so just to sort of close this all out, mobile really is going to become the driver as the primary communication channel, at least in my particular view, 
between transit riders and transit agencies, especially as the technology associated with NFC and contactless becomes more pre prevalent. Uh, it's, it's a natural point of communication. If I at least look at how I communicate on my day-to-day -day basis with my hotels, my airlines, my banks, my retailers even, it's now predominantly occurring through a mobile device. And I would anticipate that that same trend to occur in the side of the transportation space as well. My enthusiasm and desire to engage with a ticket vending machine is likely to wane as I have opportunities to do so through, through that mobile opportunity. And the value of each individual user in terms of their data to an advertiser, that's, that's actually quite valuable. You, you possess access to information that advertisers will resonate with if, and this is the big if, if it's leveraged in the correct way. Privacy has to be taken as a first top priority consideration. You can't just spam these individuals. Doing so will not only turn off those individual users, but it also might get you into trouble. Nobody wants to get into trouble, but at the same time, you don't want to weaken your own brand. It has to be done in a contextual, relevant way, taking privacy into top of mind. And of course, we've all sort of seen the fallout that's been coming out of Facebook and YouTube, I think, just recently, as of this week, got fined for uh, violating the privacy rights of children. It's, it's a pretty big deal. Um, if done correctly, this isn't a big deal in the sense of you won't get yourself uh, a foul, but it has to be done. It has to be taken into consideration from day one. This cannot be an afterthought. And then loyalty really is an opportunity for transit agencies. It has an opportunity to drive user behavior, change user behavior, and certainly, at least in my opinion, provides an opportunity to increase the ridership. But there has to be a trade-off. How does that person get that loyalty point? Who pays for that loyalty point is a consideration. If a transit agency has the capability of supporting that loyalty point issuance on their own, that's fantastic. If the transit agency needs somebody else to pay for it, then there are opportunities in the world of revenue of advertising. Um, but this is, does represent a rather interesting space. Uh, some of you may or may not have seen the Wired article that came out a couple of weeks or months ago, I can't recall the exact time frame, where it did talk of just about this, about the scenario of what could a loyalty program do for public transportation. And I think we're only just starting to sort of scratch the surface of this particular space. Uh, we, Cubic, we're really excited about what, what it is that we're creating, but I'm personally very interested to see where this whole space evolves over the course of the next uh, 12 months, um, as I do anticipate that things will begin to get in motion as certainly we launch our program, but as we start to see others explore this opportunity as well. Uh, so with that, that I think that that is me done.